Welcome to this edition of INN CEO Talks. Joining me today is Alex Klenman, the president and CEO of Azencourt Energy, which trades on the TSX Venture under the symbol AAZ, on the OTCQB under the symbol AZURF, and on the Frankfurt under the symbol A0U2. Mr. Clement has served as president and CEO of Azencourt since July of 2017. He brings over 30 years of business development, marketing, finance, media, and corporate communications experience to his roles. Throughout his career, he has held and currently holds senior management and board positions in both public and private sector companies. Alex, your CV is impressive, and I wish we could just talk about the, all those wonderful uh, roles that you have in the temp- companies and organizations that you touch on. But today we're here to talk about Azencourt Energy, and you have some news. So let's get to that news right now. Tell us what's been happening here in the last week, because you've had quite a number of uh, press releases. Yeah, no. Uh, well, certainly, first and foremost, is uh, we announced an $8.1 million financing, um, which is always good as an explorationist for us to know that we have a deep treasury and that we can pursue our initiatives uh, in a healthy and robust way. So that's number one. And number two, we've announced a partnership with a company called Phoby AI. So we're um, eager to bring artificial intelligence, data mining, uh, rapid algorithm work into the exploration sector. It's being done um, in small ways elsewhere, uh, but nobody's really applying it to uranium exploration in the Athabasca, and so uh, we might be uh, a first mover. So we'd like to do that, embrace new technology, and see how it can make uh, make us more efficient. So how how is that going to do those things, help you with your exploration, your planning, and efficiency? Well, in, in, in a number of ways. Number one, uh, you know, human uh, involvement. Uh, we're, 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 I guess, prohibited by how quickly we can do things. Uh, algorithm, AI, machine learning, we can crawl enormous amounts of data in an infinitely faster way and detect some patterns and consistencies across those data points that we might take a long time to get to. I guess the ultimate goal here is to utilize the technology to allow us to make discoveries quicker, which means better, better, less impactful uh, on the on the environment, and and to do it in a way that's uh, fiscally more efficient. So we're spending less dollars on on drill holes and, and exploration initiatives. Um, in in what we're not going to waste as much time looking at dead ground. I mean, that's the ultimate goal. Well, and that's an important goal because, as you know, from first initial discovery through to confirmation to ultimately, if you're going to be in a position where you're building out a mine, you can easily be looking at a decade. And anything that you can do to crunch that time becomes really important. So with that in mind, what are your exploration program plans right now uh, for the immediate uh, and you know short term future? Yeah. Yeah, well, as you know, as you and I have spoken before, our main project here at, at Azincourt is, is the East Preston Uranium Project located in the western Athabasca. Um, since you and I last spoke, we may, we uh, earned uh, majority interest in the project. And uh, subsequent to that, we've been able, been able to raise significant uh, money to apply. So over the last four, a little over four years, we put 17 holes down, so minimal amount of drilling a large project around 25,000 hectares. Now we're uh, heading into our drill program in the winter here and we're going to do 30 to 35 holes. So we're exceeding the entire uh, pre-run here for uh, four years uh, with the um, with this program and uh, we're, we're we have strong institutional support from from funds which allow us to, to get more aggressive uh, and right now we're looking at you know basically 10-year highs in the price of uh, spot uranium so that the market's woken up. And our, our timing looks really good. We're excited to be cashed up and doing our biggest drill program in the best market we've seen uh, since 2011. Well, yeah, that uranium market really is starting to look as though it it holds promise now, isn't it? Because it has been sitting flat for quite some time. Yeah, you know, and, and uh, part of the conversations we've had in the past is, 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 is it coming? When is it coming? 
you know, and, and so there were a lot of us standing at the train station, checking our watches, wondering how late the trains at in, in, in finally it's arrived. So you know, we're a 40, $45 spot, which is quite a jump. Um, and, and we're looking, you know, I mean, we could see 60, $70 spot. Uh, uh-huh. it, it's just that there's a matter of, uh, supply and demand, uh, fundamentals here that really leads you to believe that we could be in such a crazy market in 2022. So we're happy. Um, it's, it's arrived. It hasn't hit full, uh, yet, but we expect it to. And, uh, once the U S utilities start signing these long-term contracts and, and securing long-term supply of uranium, um, that's going to have a real boost as well. So we're, we're pretty close. So what do you understand about that market, particularly in the United States? Because I, I think back on some of those conversations that we've had in the yeah. past. It is very important that we are a North American supplier of uranium. The United yeah. States looks at this as an essential metal. Um, mm-hmm. What does the sort of the intersection of the development of your project and the need, especially in the United States, looking like from your perspective? Yeah. Well, there's quite a jump from what we're doing now to being able to meet those Right, so we have to be very clear there. We're an exploration company. You still need to make impactful discovery. But in terms of the uranium itself, uh, look, the United States has, I think, the number is uh, about 11 percent of, of their nuclear fuel. Um, the uranium used for the nuclear reactors to produce nuclear energy in the United States is about 11 percent. So their reliance elsewhere is quite large, and Canada fills that void. We're across the border; we're not far away. Jurisdictional, uh, jurisdictionally clean and politically friendly. So um, this is a good place for U.S. utilities to come and, and buy their, their product. Um, but there's a, a number of things that have, have sort of uh, made the market the way it is. And right now, the U.S. utilities, um, number of uh, long-term contracts that have expired, are expiring, and will, will expire at record levels. They have to start to buy and secure that supply. So that's what we think is going to be a huge catalyst moving forward to get uh, the spot price moving even higher and uh, bring more attention to the sector in general. So for, as you pointed out, you're an exploration company and for a lot of investors, they're going, okay. So as we look forward, is now the time uh, for me to get in? You've just completed a, a round of successful financing. Yeah. Where from here and why is now the time that I uh, need to be getting behind yeah. Asian Court? Yeah, the old, the old elevator pitch, right? I yeah, exactly. Tell, <laughs> I, I have to tell the guy in 30 seconds why it's a good idea to buy a stock. Well, you know, normally, look, um, you get a huge return from exploration companies that make first discovery. That's that's number one. Um, producers are going to move. The mid-tiers are going to move. Uh, where you typically see a lot of movement is explorers uh, that they're able to bring impactful discovery to a very robust market. We're kind of in that position right now. We're, uh, the recent drilling that we did last year, the last three holes gave us elevated uranium in, in those holes for the first time. Uh, now, not enormous amounts, so we call it a, a discovery, but we're, we're vectoring towards discovery, um, and we're going to be able to hit 30, 35 targets this winter uh, alone, and we like our chances. So, you know, for those people who are interested in getting in pre-discovery, um, this is a good time. And then you have to look at at what just occurred. We had 17, 18 different funds invest a little north of $8 million into Asincourt prior to a discovery. So why are they doing that? Obviously, discovery and exploration is a risky business, but they did their due diligence. They like A, the sector, and B, there must be validity to the project, and they must also feel that we're close to discovery. There's no other way to explain the level of involvement that we've seen uh, over mm-hmm. the last little while. I mean, we've raised uh, north of $12 million in 2021 for a, for a pre-discovery drill company. It's quite rare. Yeah, well, it is. You know, I appreciate the fact, Alex, that you come back uh, on a uh, fairly regular basis to yeah. give us these sorts of updates. And it's that kind of assurance, especially for anybody who is looking at Asian Court right now, you can go back and you can take a look at some of those past interviews and you yeah. can see the development, the way that this project has continued to, to grow out. And I, and I encourage uh, viewers to do that. But Alex, of course, I'd love to have you come back in a couple of months and give us another update. I will do that because hopefully we can come back and talk about uh, meaningful discovery. That's that's the next milestone we're, we're looking to achieve. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for your time today. Appreciate it, Stu. Always good to see you. Thank you so much. Bye for now.